My God, my God. I feel started already. Let me shift the gear back to the teachers. Please sit down in Jesus' name. Clap your hands if you're ready for what God is going to do. We have a very rich text in Ezra. And every time they invite you to speak at a conference and the host minister starts to introduce the topic, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, because now you must align yourself to what has been introduced. But uh, the few hours I have been with our apostle, I can tell that we are very kindred spirits. And I love that. In verse number 14 of Ezra chapter number 6, he says, And the elders of the Jews built it, and they prospered through the prophesyings of Haggai the prophet, and Zechariah the son of Edo, and they built it, and they finished it. There will be a finishing in this season in Jesus' name. Aye, aye, aye. Come on, I said, there will be a finishing in the name of Jesus. He says, and they finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel and according to the commandment of Cyrus and Darius and Ataxexus, king of Persia. Verse 15, and this house was finished on the third day of the month Adar and was in the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. I've taken some time to study that text. And today I want to share with you from the heart of God on what I believe is going to cause you to excel. How many people are ready to excel? Yeah, because we're talking about excelling by that word of prophecy. Lift your hand, say, I will excel. I must excel. I should excel. I will excel according to the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I want to thank you for your awesome word that comes to us this evening. And I thank you because in this house, you only gather because you want to minister. And beyond this house as well, to the airwaves, I'm speaking in the name of Jesus and anybody that has been graced to connect today. Lord, let their hearts be ministered to and let them hear your word that has the ability to save their souls. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Say amen. All right. The assignment that the Lord put on my life as a minister or as an apostle was to reveal the mysteries concerning the kingdom of God. In Matthew chapter number 13 and in verse number 11, Jesus has been speaking to the people in parables. And so the disciples come to Jesus and they ask him, why do you speak to these people in parables? In verse number 11, the scripture says, and he answered and said unto them, because, come on now, it is given unto you, talk to me somebody, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Look at your neighbor, say knowledge is given. Come on, knowledge is given. And I'm praying today, may the knowledge of God be given into your spirit in Jesus' name. You say Amen. So he says, to you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Hallelujah. And the entire livelihood of our Christian faith is really established on our understanding of the operations of the kingdom of God. In John chapter number 3, he says that unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What he's talking about is that after our born again experience, the next experience that we need is the experience of the kingdom of God. After you have come into an encounter with Christ, the very next encounter you need is an encounter with and of the kingdom of God. So whatever it is that we have to study tonight or through this week must be seen through the lens of the kingdom of God. Are we together somebody? Now when we begin to look at the kingdom of God, we will then understand that there is a place of prophecy in the kingdom of God. But it is the understanding of the heart of God concerning prophecy that is going to cause us to excel. Are we together tonight? I said are we together tonight? What is this kingdom of God that we are talking about? If you're writing, and I love it when we can write something down. The kingdom of God is the rule and the reign of God. Kingdom of God is the rule 
and the reign of God. The kingdom of God is that spiritual territory where God is in charge. Where God is chief. Where his dominion is what rules the hearts and the minds of people. The kingdom of God is, are you writing a spiritual reality? In Luke chapter number 17, verse number 19, 20, 21, the Pharisees came to him and they asked him, he says, uh, when will the kingdom of God come? He looked at them and says that the kingdom of God does not come by observation, verse 20. In verse 21, he says, neither do you say, talk to me now, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Put your hand on your heart and say, the kingdom of God is within me. Say it with me. Come on, the kingdom of God is within me. Say it one more time. The kingdom of God is within me. So if the kingdom of God is the rule and the reign of God, it means that the ultimate purpose of the coming of the kingdom is so that God may rule the hearts and the minds of men. Heba su kaliba. The reason why the kingdom of God comes is so that God might be chief in your life. He will take over your mindset. He will take over your planning. He, when we ask you what is your five year plan, you refer back to what the kingdom of God has planned for your next five years. It's now not my will, but the will of the kingdom of God that I carry on the inside of me. I'm laying a foundation for where we are going. So the kingdom of God now ultimately is not a space on the outside of us, but it is a reality on the inside of us. And that reality is marked by how much God is in control or is in charge of your life. Are we together somebody? So now the kingdom of God becomes the rule and reign of God over the hearts and over the minds of men. If that is right then, the kingdom of God operates as a man submits to what God wants to do. Please write it down. The kingdom of God begins to operate as a man submits. As a man submits to what the kingdom of God wants to do. We are coming to prophecy in a minute. Don't worry. So that means now that the kingdom of God is a reality where my will is submitted to the will of the king. So the conversation of prophecy begins with the understanding of the will of the king. Uh, are you walking with me? That we are going to start to talk about prophecy subject to the will of the king. Are we there? In Ecclesiastes chapter number 8 verse 4, we will see that the word of the king is law. The word of the king becomes law. The word of the king becomes law. He says it in the King James, where the word of the king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what are you doing? So you realize that the way I have God in charge is I must be a student of the word to the level at which subjects receive word from their king. And you realize that when a, a king speaks, whatever he says is law. Why are we going to see excellence come into our lives? And why is there going to be a great rebuilding happening? Not just here, but in the body of Christ. is because God is about to raise men and women who take his word as law. Oh, let me say that again. God is about to raise men and women who take his word as law. Tap your neighbor to see if they're still with us. We're, we're building it up. Come on. Tap them. Say, take his word as law. 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 The word of a king is law. So, the existence of every man under the king is to bring into fulfillment the word of that king. My purpose in life is to make sure that the word of the king over my life comes to pass. The fulfillment of the will of the king becomes the ultimate purpose of my life. And that word of the king, which is law, is in fact the foundation of his kingdom. Write it as we build it up. 
the word of the Lord which is law becomes the foundation of his kingdom. The word is the foundation of his kingdom. We must raise young people now who honor the word as a way of honoring the king. We begin to raise ministries that honor the word as a way of honoring the king. Hallelujah, somebody. Talk to me, Christ Compassion Ministries. That is CCM. I think I have just said CCM, so I don't bite my tongue. Can you talk to me, CCM? Lift one hand. Say, the word of the Lord is law in my life. Say it one more time. The word of the Lord is law in my life. Let's look at Hebrews chapter number 1. And then I will take you to Ezra. So you know why I had to give you such an introduction. In Hebrews chapter number 1. The Bible says in verse 1. That God who at sundry times and in diverse manners. He spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. So the purpose of the prophets was to be the communication. God and the fathers. Talk to me now. The purpose of the prophets was to be that venue, that avenue of communication between God and the fathers. When God wanted to speak to our fathers, he found a prophet. He found somebody that would carry that word to the king. We have to be careful in this day where <laughs> the kings are swallowing up the prophets. We have to be careful where the kings have begin have begun to corrupt the prophets we have to be careful in this day where kings have become their own prophets you remember Saul that's the reason why he was rejected by God because he wanted to be his own prophet so God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets verse number two has in these last days help me read CCM come on he has in his last days spoken unto us by his son, come on, whom he has appointed heir of all things and by whom also he made the world. So we already see that the son is coming as a king and he's coming to rule on behalf of his father. Verse number three, who being the brightness of his glory, read with me, and the express image of his person upholding all things let me see a fist somebody make a fist make a fist make a fist with me because we are about to get into some business now are you ready upholding all things how come on how by the word of his power uh, look at your neighbor say your fist is not very convincing you look like come on come on come on you are about to uphold your destiny are you here we are about to uphold the ministry we are about to uphold our families anybody here by the word of his power upholding all things by the word of his power because this is the characteristic of a king he upholds all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of majesty, and is now made much better than the angels, and he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. The kingdom of God operates by how you uphold the word. And today, in the name of Jesus, by the grace of the Lord, before we complete this service, I want us to begin to speak back by the word of that power. A great rebuilding in our lives. A great rebuilding in our ministry. I need to hear an amen. A great rebuilding in our families. Say in Jesus mighty name. So the language of Jesus was the language of upholding the word of his power. When Jesus came, he didn't come to suggest changes. He came to institute changes. He didn't come to ask people's opinions. He came to bring the Lord or God's opinion on the earth. And the thing about the king is that when a king utters a word, immediately everything under his jurisdiction begins to run to make sure that this word comes to pass. So in this conference, 
Because we are king's kids. Any, anybody here? Any, any king's kids present? Because we are... Where, where, where are the king's kids here? Because we are king's kids. Guess what? Not only are we going to speak prophetically. But we are also going to utter out the word of the king. Until whatever we say must come to pass. Tell your neighbor. I didn't say may come to pass. Tell your neighbor whatever we say... It must come to pass. Pull your neighbor. Say, I don't know if you are a king's kid. But this is the characteristic of every king's kid. Whatever you decree, it will come to pass. Pull on them a little more. You're going to disturb your neighbor today. Tell Abu Salim, say, in the name of Jesus, you receive the grace to prophesy but you also receive the grace to act like a king because you are a king's kid and whatever you say it must come to pass hallelujah somebody. are we there so the conversations today are in two ways we are going to have a conversation of prophet and we are going to have a conversation of kings but I'm still looking for my people. I don't know if they are here. Uh, maybe they are in China watching us. I, do I have any people here tonight? How many of you are ready to put on your jacket of prophecy? Are you ready to put on your jacket of kingship? Where are you? Shout, say, I'm here. Shout, say, I'm here. Say it again, I'm here. All right. So the power of any kingdom is based on the word of that kingdom. And God will find people that can prophesy that word. But he will also find people that can put on the king's clothes. And decree and declare that this that we are speaking by the word of the king must come to pass. Are we there? We are about to speak to the lands below us. Uh, no, no, no. Let me check this other side. We are about to speak. To the lands on that side. Not prophetically as a wish that might come to pass. But kings that are decreeing that this territory belongs to us. And those are the ones I'm looking for. Say in Jesus name. I will speak the king's language. Ah, Say it in Jesus name. I will speak the king's language. Say in Jesus name. I will prophesy, but I will also speak the king's language. Because the kingdom has come, and the king has spoken. Hallelujah, somebody. Alright. Give me a few more minutes. Let me build my case. So now, we understand why apostle had to choose Ezra. We understand that the rebuilding of the house of God in Ezra chapter number 6. Could not happen unless a king had spoken. You will realize that the prophet had prophesied, but the king had not yet spoken. I need some help in here. The prophet Jeremiah had spoken, but the king had not yet spoken. The prophet had ministered about what the will of God is, but it was not going to happen. Until a reigning king says, this is now the time of that which was pro Magazola, of that which was prophesied to come to pass. So you, you will see that we move from the dispensation of the prophets and we step into the dispensation of the kings so that what was prophesied may now come to pass. So Jesus doesn't come as a prophet, but John the Baptist comes as a prophet. John the Baptist is the greatest prophet of all born of women. However, those that are the least in the kingdom of God are greater than John the Baptist because these ones are not coming to prophesy. They are coming to institute what was, pro to institute what was prophesied. Are you still flowing with me? So God had spoken prophetically, but he had to stir up the heart of a king. And this king didn't even have to be a believer. 
They just had to be attuned to what God wanted to do. The king just had to know what time it is. The king just had to know what was written in the books. So when the king remembered or when the king checked out the books, like we will see, he realized that there was a lingering prophetic word that had never come to pass. I speak over every lingering prophetic word over your life. Whatever was spoken over you by God through the mouth of the prophets. I didn't come to prophesy. I came as a king and I came to say, let there be order in your life. Let there be increase in your life. Let there be. Come on, help me now. I said, let there, there, let the ways open for you. Let the rivers gush out for you. Let there be a quickening for you. Let there be a rising up for you. Let there be a running over for you. I'm not prophesying. I'm telling you, let it come to pass. When Jesus came, Jesus didn't come and say, there are um, uh, uh, five days from now, you will be healed. He didn't promise anybody healing. He says, take up your bed now. <laughs> because he's not a prophet who prophesies healing. No, he's a king who institutes the finished works of God. Oh, I came to start up some kings. Do I have some kings in here? There is a level of prophecy, but there's also a level of kingship. Now watch this. Do you know that even though I am anointed with oil from River Jordan, if, even if I am so anointed in prophecy, what I say to you will never come to pass until you say something. It is what you say about what I have said that comes to pass. So many of us are looking for prophets rather than understanding our kingship. It's not what I say that has the power to come to pass. It is who I am that has the ability to make sure that what was said either comes to pass or goes back to sender. Yeah, there are some prophecies you should send back to sender. Tap your neighbor, pull on them, say the prophet is good, but it is the king that establishes the word. Come on, somebody. The prophet is good, but it is the king. Where are the kings in this house? Come on, somebody. May the Lord start up the kingship anointing in you. May you begin to recognize that seasons favor the king. Oh, may you begin to understand that it doesn't matter what they said. It matters what I decree. Job said you will decree a thing and it shall be established. Are you ready now? And I'm still in the intro. I hope you're still with me. And it's good your apostle warned you. I'm preaching for four hours. So you better... Put a cushion behind there because we are still going. Hallelujah, somebody. How many love the word? Let me see. I know this is a church that loves the word. Are you there? So let's lay some very important foundations for our conference. Go back to Ezra chapter number 6. Hallelujah. You better pray in the spirit if you're going to catch what we are saying tonight. A lot of what I'm saying is very prophetic. So you better catch it, catch it, catch it. I can't hear those tongues. Come on, catch it, catch it. Catch it, catch it. I can't hear you, catch it. Your life has delayed for too long. Catch it, catch it, catch it. Come on, we're not going around the mountain for 40 years. Catch it, catch it. I said, come on, come on. It's not business as usual. Catch it. Hey, catch it, catch it, catch it. You're not here because you don't have things to do. Some of you got leave from the bank. Come on, somebody. So use this time wisely because your tomorrow depends on your today hallelujah now look at the language i mean i mean uh, uh where am i ezra chapter 6 look at verse 1 then darius the king so whatever we are going to read <laughs> is depending on this gentleman here called darius the king by the way god had already spoken so it's now not even depending on God. 
God, look at your neighbor. Say, God already spoke. Look at your neighbor. Say, God already spoke. Didn't we read it in Hebrews 1? He says he spoke to us by his son. Unless you want him to say something that he didn't tell us by his son. Everything God will ever say to you. He has already said it through Jesus. There is no, oh God speak to me. He points you to Jesus. That's why this is Christ. We are centered on Christ. Because he's the voice of God to us. And if we don't know him, then we do not know God. So God has spoken. But there is a Darius that needs to speak. <laughs> so now Darius, are you there in verse 1? Uh, this young man is looking at me like he's watching a movie. Glory to God. Verse 1, then Darius the king made a decree. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I have left all of you alone. I'm here. But there are some decrees I have to make about Kampala. So if you guys are looking at me pretty and oh, it's okay. I have some decrees I have to make over our ministry. I have some decrees I have to make over my life. So you better flow with me. Darius did not pray a prayer. Darius did not say, Lord, if it is your will. Darius did not even have to, you know, jump seven times. Turn around. The devil is a liar. Kings don't have those Pentecostal gymnastics. Kings are just waiting to make you look like the decrees you've been making over your life. You are so king that when you wake up in the morning and say this is going to be a tough day. All the angels begin to work together to make sure that what you have decreed comes to pass. They run to the door that was open and they close it. They say the king has said that this has to be a tough day. They ran to your boss and hardened his heart. Because it has to be. As you have said. Look at your neighbor. Say your problem. Come on look at somebody. Say the decrees you were making. So Darius made a decree. What did he say? And such was made. In the house. Of the rolls. Or call them the scrolls. So what is Darius looking for? He is looking for the word upon which he can base his decree. When the Bible says 633 of Matthew, seek first the kingdom. Oh, Lazeba, what you are really looking for is the word of the kingdom upon which you can base your decree. So he looked for the rolls of Crawls or the word he says, and where the treasures were laid up in Babylon. I know we have time, so I'll take you to the first chapter of Ezra. Go to the first chapter. In the first chapter of Ezra, <laughs> the very first verse, hallelujah, somebody. Come on, talk to this Ugandan. Hallelujah, somebody. In verse number one, he says, Now, in the first year of who? Cyrus, king of Persia. It's a king's language. I don't preach kingdom for, for Christianity. I don't preach kingdom because, uh, you know what, um, I don't even know what you understand when I say kingdom. But I, I preach kingdom because it's the only thing, come on now, that reveals to me my true position in the heart of God. God has come to establish a kingdom here. He has not come to start a denomination. He has not come to start a church. He has no, he has, even the, even the uh, even heathen kings like Herod, when they told him Jesus was born, he understood that there is going to be an exchange of kingdoms. He understood that a king has been born. And the reason Jesus was killed is not because he was Christian, but because he proclaimed.
proclaimed himself as king. And King Herod knew that when kings speak, things happen. Now this young boy who's being born a king, if he starts to speak as a king, things are going to begin to happen. Let's kill him before he decrees a thing. So now we understand that everything in your life is waiting for the king in you to arise. Where are the kings here? You're going to change the way you're seated. You're going to even, come on, cross your legs, say, I'm a king. And this is not gender sensitive. Come on, women, just cross your legs, say, I'm a king, and I'm in charge. Come on, somebody, and I will excel in this economy. Talk to me, I will excel in this economy. I will excel in my family. My children. I can't hear you. My children, they will go to the schools I want. Not the ones I can afford. The ones I want. Talk to me, somebody. Say, I'm a king. In God's kingdom. Okay. So, let's behave for a minute. Verse 1. Chapter 1 of Ezra. What does he say? In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia. Look at this. The word of the Lord. You remember the word of his power? The word of the Lord. By the mouth of Jeremiah. Might be fulfilled. So there's a prophetic word lingering. There's a prophetic word lingering. By the mouth of Jeremiah. That that word must come to pass. But what is delaying the word from coming to pass? The presence of a king who can connect to what God wants to do. So you know in that day, of course there's no move of the Holy Spirit. So kings are as dry as dry bones. God says no. This is a king of Persia. Are you, are you catching me? This is a, he's not an unbelieving king. I mean, he's not a believing king. He's, he's a king of Persia. And you remember Persia. Persia is not the best kingdom to be a king over. All right? But when God wants to do something, if these Christians are not being stirred up, the Lord has the ability to stir up even the unbelievers if that's what it takes for the prophetic word to pass. But look at your neighbor say, God, don't. Come on, come on, come on. Look at your neighbor say, may God never have to look for somebody to substitute you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Say, may the Lord never have. Come on, come on, come on. Look at them say, when the Lord begins to stir up your heart. When the Lord, eh, when the Lord begins to stir up your heart. Speak as you are being led by the Spirit of God. So that the word of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord, what did he do? When was the last time our church here had a revival? Because I, I have a feeling this week would be a good time. Come on now. When, when was the last time we drank from the... Anybody here? Because this scripture must come to pass. I didn't choose the theme. No. God chose it through our apostle. So I'm here just to scream to you what God is saying. He says, God stand up. Ero Sadiba. He stirred up the spirit <laughs> of Cyrus. Oh, there is a stirring. King of Persia. What is he stirring him for? Come on. That he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and he also put it in writing. <laughs> Hey, put your hand on your belly. Say, Lord, stir me up. Stir up my spirit. Stir up my spiritual senses. Stir up my understanding of your word. Stir me up, Lord, so that I may proclaim, so that I may decree, so that I may declare the things that you want to happen. In the name of, come on, somebody. Say, stir me up, Lord, so I may decree as a king. In your kingdom, what you want to do, stir me up, Lord. Paul told Timothy, stir up that gift that was put in you by the laying on of hands of the presbytery. He says, I considered your grandmother. 
she had it. I looked at your mother. She had it. Now I'm convinced you also have it. You're not catching me. When I visited the house of Apostle Enos, I know he has it. When I looked at Pastor Kathy, ah, you blessed me with your smile. I know you got it. If your parents have it, nobody's in this house. I said, if your parents have it, I know that you have it. The only problem is you must be stirred up so that when he says, let there be, you also look there and say, it must come to pass. When he says, we are going to downwards, you say, let's go tomorrow. I'm convinced that it is in you also. And for you sons that have children, even your children get it. Stop praying in tongues as if you're doing yourself a favor. Stop susuring prayer. Come on, somebody. Speak like a king. Say, It must come to pass. Yeah. Now we speak to that cathedral to be built in the name of Jesus. Every facility we need, every money we need, whatever we need for that project to prosper today at the beginning of this conference, we decree and we declare that the house will be built and the elders will prosper in the thing that God has called them to do. Ah! And I want an office in that building. Yeah. I want an office in, the, in that building. I'm not asking. Kings don't ask. Somewhere in the corner. Yeah. Oh, you think I'm boasting? Do you know my father? He's worse than I am. Woo! I said, woo! Now listen to how Cyrus speaks. Verse 2. Darius alone. Eh? We're with Cyrus. But the bottom line is they are both kings. In fact, when Darius noticed that Cyrus had spoken, this is king's language. Because when he checked the books in chapter 6, he realized that in chapter 1, there is a king, his father, who had already spoken these things. How many of you have a prophetic word on your family? You know it. Okay, if your hand is not up, we are doing altar call later. Come on, somebody. Hey, you know there is a word over your family. But you're wondering, why is it not coming to pass? Well, beginning with you now, whatever you will decree and declare, it shall be done. So let me hear Cyrus. Verse 2. Speak with me. Come on. Cyrus the king of Persia said. The Lord God of heaven. <laughs> What's this area called? What's the name of this area? At the river? Alright. The Lord God of heaven. Has given me at the river. Look at your religious self. Thinking that I am. Look at you. You can't even. Can you get it? There are people who are not praying for rent. They are not praying for shoes and clothes. There are people who are praying for kingdoms. Do you know how many shoes are in a kingdom? The Lord God of heaven. We are changing our prayer books. Come on. The Lord God of heaven. Has given me all kingdoms of the earth. Ah! I'm angry at my prayers. I was a fool to pray the way I have been praying. No, Persia is not all the earth. How can the king of Persia say he has given me all the earth? Because he knows that the same God who gave me Persia also has the ability to give me all the earth. But here we, oh God, take me to America. 
Oh God, if you can only give me a visa to Canada. Oh God, remember me, Lord. The devil is a liar. The Bible doesn't say that the God who you serve will take you to the rivers. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says he will cause the rivers. <laughs> oh, help me somebody. He will cause the rivers to walk. You don't have to fly. They will fly. The rivers will come to that desert place. And they will turn it into a fertile ground. I believe in a God who can bless me where I am. I don't have to relocate to be blessed. And wash grandmother's glory to God. I pray for us tonight. We will begin to speak as kings. Cyrus says the God over the earth. Come on now. Has given me. All the kingdoms of the earth. And my house rako sadi e da 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 de sibelela conti belela zibele katebaso e ba se ne mendosa. He has stirred me up, and he has given me a charge. He has given me a charge to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Ah, what is your charge? What has God asked you to do? What has the Lord given CCM to do? I'm asking. Come on, talk to me. Talk to me. What is the instruction over this house? I can hear you. What is the instruction over this house? To build him a house in Afi River. Let's not get too revelational. Are you getting it now? The assignment is build me a house. Not build yourself a house. Because you want a prophetic word for the building of your house. But the prophetic word is build me a house. And anybody who's prophesying that you're going to build a house is a liar. The real prophetic word is you must build God a house. And whatever else you will need is depending. On your fulfillment of his prophetic word. God doesn't bless your prayers. He blesses his need. He blesses what he wants to do. And if your prayers by any chance. Are lining up. With what God wants to do. You end up blessed. He has charged me. So. <laughs> I speak a charging over the hearts. Of the elders. I speak a charge. Where is the church in here? I speak a charge. Hey, hey. I speak a charge. Over the ministers of this house. I speak a charge. Over the sons of this house. I speak a charge. God is not requesting the king to build. God is charging the king to build. But. Because he is king, he knows how to honor the word of the king. It takes kings to honor the word of the king. So Cyrus knows that whenever he speaks, stuff must happen. So if there is a greater king that has spoken, uh, it is not a suggestion now. It is a charge in my heart. So he says, we are going to build this house. Verse 3. Look at what happens. And I feel very prophetic. I feel like I'm right in the middle of what God is doing in this church. So look at verse 3. He says, who there among you of all his people? <laughs> his God be with him. And let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah. And build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God. Which is in Jerusalem. Can you imagine? God did not speak to his people. God spoke to his king. So much that it took his king to gather his people. Unless you position yourself to be charged of God. 
instruction will be given to somebody else and you will be collateral damage i don't know who i'm talking to but you 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 will be an escort to a fulfillment of something that you were supposed to take charge of he says gather gather the people and build him he is god he identified even as a king of persia that god is god I'm going to work on that a bit maybe tomorrow and a, a few other days on, on something. I will, I will let you know. Now, now watch this. Verse number 4. Then what happened? Whosoever remains in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help. Kadusiba. Are you checking this? Anybody. In the vicinity of the prophetic world. Hey. I command you. To bring the silver. I command. Can you say. Can we read the Bible. Let the men of his place. Let them help him. With silver. With gold. With goods. With beasts. With cars. Come on help me somebody. With cement. With iron bars. With. I can hear the Bible. Come on with whatever is needed. Beside, after you brought all those things, then bring also the free will offering <laughs> for the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. And beside all that was willingly offered, verse 6, they, and all that were there about them strengthened their hands. Apostle, you told me the people were here. Where are they? I'm looking for them. Are you here? Where are the people? Where? Are... Come on, you, you told me they are here. Where are you? Verse 6. What did they do? What did they do? My God. What did they do? Verse 6. Pull your neighbor's hand, which is like it's crippled. Tell them, be loose. Now tell them, strengthen your hand. Strengthen your hand. Strengthen their hands. He says with silver. With vessels of silver. With gold. With goods. With beasts. With precious things. Beside all that was willingly offered. Then the king said. I'm also participating. So the king also went into his closet. And Cyrus the king brought forth the vessels of the house of the Lord. Which Nebuchadnezzar had brought out of Jerusalem. And had put them in the house of his gods. Even those did Cyrus king of Persia bring forth by the hand of that guy the treasurer. Numbered them unto that guy the prince of Judah. The king said I will also be a part of this movement. How many are catching the floor? Are you catching us now? So by the time we get to chapter 6. You know in chapter 2. Where are the students of the Bible? I want to ask you to read chapter 2, 3, 4, 5. So that by the time you arrive in 6, you know where we are coming from. Hallelujah. Because you will not understand where we are going unless you know where we are coming from. Because between chapter 2 and, verse, and chapter number 6, so many things happen. Kings switched. Cyrus is off. Enemies showed up. People, uh, you, you, you know the, just like the building of, uh, of the temple when Sanballat and Tobias came up. So even here, you will find that there were enemies who rose and they began to speak against the building of the house. And they began to lie to the king. And they said, those guys, those guys are exiles. They're going to destroy. Those guys, don't, don't even trust them with their rebuilding. Well, by the time we get to chapter number 6. Are you there? I told you, we are checking the microphone. So you better stay with me. Are you still here? Okay. So, in chapter number 2, it tells us the exiles who returned. To build. In chapter, I speak to every exile who had left the ministry. Anybody. That was ordained to be a part of this movement. But for some crazy thing. Or some crazy. I don't even know. Walked out of the assignment of God. I command them with the word of the king. To find their way back from Babylon. And make their way here. Because they will build the house of the Lord. I speak to every exile to return in Jesus' name. Verse 3. 
the altar was rebuilt. The altar was rebuilt. The people began to rebuild the temple. Verse 4, chapter 4, sorry, these are chapters I'm speaking now. Chapter 4, enemies, and they oppose the rebuilding. Chapter 5, the rebuilding returns. And in chapter 6, that is when Darius now comes and makes a decree. I'm in chapter number 6, verse number 3. So in the first year of Cyrus, the king, the same Cyrus, the king, are you there? Made a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Now catch this. We are in the day of Darius. So Darius has found the scroll about Cyrus. Are we together? And now he has read that his father, or for our father the king, had made a decree that let the house be built. The place where they offered sacrifices and let the foundations thereof be strongly laid. The height there, three three score cubits and the breadth thereof three three score cubits i mean the detail is given and i saw the blueprint already so i speak over that blueprint in the name of jesus to the detail at which it has been designed may the lord build it say amen, amen. keep going verse 7 let the work of this house of let the work of this house of god alone let the governor of the jews and the elders of the jews build this house of god in his place so the governors are going to build Amen. Those who caught it, caught it. Verse 8, moreover. So now, the new king makes a decree. I make a decree. What ye shall do to the elders of these Jews for the building of this house. That of the king's goods. <clears throat> of this house of God. And even the tribute beyond the river. Forthwith. Did you see river there? Come on somebody. I can't hear anybody. Come on, come on. Are we in Athi River or somewhere? Forthwith, expenses be given unto these men that they be not hindered. Are you catching where our theme is coming from? Even beyond Athi River, I think we are now in Nairobi. Verse 11. Maybe you have some people you're scared about. There in verse 11. I have also made the decree that whosoever shall alter this word, <laughs> let timber be pulled down from his house and being set up, let him be hanged there and let his house be made a dunghill for this. Is there, is there anybody in the house? We've come for serious business, people. And then you realize in verse 13, we are now in the dedication of the temple. Which is this conference. And in verse 14. The elders of the Jews build and they prosper. According to the prophesying of Haggai. And the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And they built and they finished. According to the commandment of the God of Israel. And according to the commandment of Cyrus. And Darius. And Ataxes. So there were three kings. This word had to come to pass. So I wanted to start with that prophetic introduction to the conference. And I hope that by that introduction you understand that we have not come to just prophesy little, little things to come to pass. We have come to speak the word of the Lord over our ministry. We have come to institute the king here and his kingdom here. So that men will come from all lands. I'm already speaking. Come from all continents. Come from all corners. And they will say, let us go up the hill to the house of the Lord. And they will not come empty handed. They will carry with them sheaves of gold and of silver. And they'll say, this is our contribution to the building of the house. Let it be as I have spoken in Jesus. Jesus, mighty name, somebody shout, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, shout it, say, yes Lord. yes, Lord. Because the word of the king is law. Are you there? Come on, are you there? So now let me go to the summer. Is that, is that okay? <laughs> Can I now go to the summer? <laughs> Clap your hands and give God praise. I said, clap your hands and give God uh, with a shout. In fact, stand up for the word of the Lord. 
clap your hands and celebrate what God is about to do in what God is about to do in our church celebrate what God has spoken celebrate what the king will institute celebrate a new kingdom being built I can hear you celebrate what the Lord is about to do in this house come on come on celebrate the word will come to pass the word is coming to pass the word is being established come on beyond the earthy river clap your hands clap your hands say it is done it is done in the east it is done in the west it is done in the north it is done in the south lord let it be according to the word of your kings the word of your king can you find three kings find darius come on join your hands with three people can you find three kings find darius find cyrus and find ataxesus find somebody say in the name of jesus we three kings are decreeing and declaring that this good work that the lord has begun in this place it shall prosper it shall be builded it shall succeed in the name of jesus it shall excel it shall excel come on our children will be part of it our grandchildren will be part of it our great great grandchildren will be part of it in the name of jesus squeeze that hand say let your kingdom come lord let your will be done let your kingdom come let your will be done take 30 seconds in the holy ghost tie it up tie it up i can hear you squeeze that hand liparakatosata oh sikande pale kula sedai inibriado sekia de 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 ba manto saka elala la buse squeeze that hand as a charge i charge you to build 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 shout a big hallelujah somebody Come on, come on. CCM, come on. There's a charge on us. Hallelujah. 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 Now rejoice like you see the prayer tower already up. Come on. Celebrate, 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 celebrate. Celebrate, celebrate. Woo! Woo! My God. Now sit down. Sit down. Let me talk some kingdom now. Hallelujah. Just give me a few more minutes. We shall pray. And I'm telling you, tomorrow will be hotter than today. And we are just going to keep building, building until by the time we are on Sunday, this place must be on fire. And kings will be raised. Hallelujah. Now I want to switch to the teacher. Is that okay? So get your books out. <laughs> Don't worry, just a few minutes. But I can't just scream and walk away. I will not have done ministry justice. When we talk about prophecy... We must understand that man cannot prophesy a thing and it comes to pass unless it is of God. Are we there? Unless it is of God. Isaiah 55. There are three things that I have prepared for you to speak on. And if I do those three, I'll be ready to head back home. Isaiah 55. 
You all know verse number 11, don't you? Don't you, Bible readers? Come on, pastor, help me. If nobody's talking to me, at least talk to me, all right? All right. What does it say? Come on. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Now that's prophecy. The word prophecy, we will understand it better by the definition of the word prophet. Know that the word prophet is nabi. But what that, prof, that word prophet means is a gushing forth. Mm. A coming out as of a fountain. So when you think about it, the way you see a fountain gushing water out of the ground, that's what prophecy is. A coming forth. But the source of that fountain is God. The source of what is gushing out is God. So he's saying, so shall my word that gushes out, my word that comes forth out of my mouth. Are you there? I said, are you there? He says, it shall not return to me void. So it is 100% guaranteed to come to pass. It shall not return to me void. There is an assignment to that prophetic word. He says, but it, the word that has come out, has enough power in itself, come on, to accomplish that which I please. So we're already noticing that it is only what he pleases that comes to pass. So true prophetic ministry is sourced from the fountain of life who is God. And whatever he says, talk to me now, it must come to pass according to what he pleases. You remember Paul saying it is God that worketh in me. Come on. Both to will. To do. According to his good pleasure. So kings must first understand the pleasure of the king. But before I even try what I'm trying to do. What is the pleasure of the king? Hallelujah. He says it shall accomplish. Are you still there? That which I please. And it shall excel. By the word of prophecy. It will prosper. In the thing where unto I send it. Are you there? So this is the true understanding of the prophetic word. So I did my homework. And I looked for the ways in which God sent the word. And I want to best that for what we shall use as our conversation in this conference. Prophetically, Isaiah is speaking about how God says that this shall come to pass and it comes to pass. However, when you look into it, you start to see more than just what he's saying. So the word of prophecy is always sent. But the forms, please write it down. The forms of the word are different. The forms in which he sends the word. So there are three forms that I saw in the scripture which I will present to you. Today, I'm not going to go really in depth because of time, but we will see how to build up on this. But I wanted to give you something to think about. Are we still in the house, somebody? I said, are we still in the house? Because God prophesied already. He already sent the word. He's not going to send it. He sent it. But until we understand how he sent it, the form in which he sent it, we can't understand how to connect it that we can excel in that word of prophecy. Don't think of prophecy as the word of the prophet. Think of prophecy as the word of God in the mouth of a prophet. Are you still here? Okay. So now, number one, in the Old Testament, please write this down. In the Old Testament, that word that he sent that must prosper was the law. He sent the law through Moses. But the law was representing the law of God unto men. And it's important for us to understand 
that the reason he gives us the law first is for us to appreciate the seriousness of his word. He wanted the recipients to understand that when God says you must do something, you better do it. The law of God. And as I read through the law of God, I realized that it is more than the law of Moses. You have to draw a line between the law of Moses and the law of God. The law of Moses was really a part of the law of God. What the law of God is, please write this down. It is the mind of God that must come to pass in mankind. The law of God is the desire of God. The mind of God that must come to pass. The law of God. And everyone that is here tonight, your life is under the law of God. Did you hear what I'm saying? No witch can determine what your destiny is. You are under the blanket called the law of God. And I don't like it that our new generation people don't, don't know God like that. No. No, 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 no. No, because we have substituted the law of God for grace. And we don't understand that God is serious business. Tap your neighbor, say God is serious business. Come on, tap on them, tap on them, say God is serious business. Look at them, say God is serious business. And the Lord began to reveal to us that the purpose of grace is to empower us to obey the law of God. So the primary way he sent his word was as the law of God. But today I'm going to just give you a few hints on what that law is. That's the Old Testament, but it has the pictures and the forms by which we exist today. Hallelujah. I will unpack something for you today. It's going to be beautiful. Anybody love the word? You love it? You love the word. The second way he sent his word. One was the law of God. The second way, which is the, the crux. I know it's the foundation of this ministry. So you know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. The second way that that word came to us. Was in the gospels. Where the word came as the person of Christ. So he sent the word. As the person of Christ. And unless I know who he is as the word of God, it will be impossible for me to excel or even to be the kind of man I want to be. So the second way is what? That person of Christ. He came as the word. Hallelujah. And so he has charged Christ, you will not return to me void. Christ, you will not come back to heaven void. Christ, until you have accomplished what I have sent you to do. So now Christ goes back because he has accomplished what he was sent to do. The, God, the, 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 the person of Christ. Are you still there? We will unpack that. And for me, that's really probably the center of this conference. But we'll see what the Lord has for us. Hallelujah! So, number one, please, is the is prophecy let me put it let me put my mind in order number one is prophecy as the law of god write it that way prophecy as the law of god number two is prophecy as the person of christ or the word of christ the person or the word of christ and then thirdly which is also my favorite is we saw the word coming as the law we saw the word coming as christ but then christ leaves so when he left, he commands the disciples to continue what he started. But this time he calls it the gospel of the kingdom. Are you there? He says, everywhere you go, Mark chapter number 1, verse number 5. He says, wherever you go, preach. Say, the time is fulfilled. Mark 1, 4, can, can we read that real quickly? Hallelujah. My God. Are you here, somebody? And next time I come back here, I know I will be seeing visible manifestations of this conference. No, 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 no. We didn't come here to have a conference. We came here to start a new story. Come on, somebody. We will see visible manifestations of them. Mark 1.15. Thank you. And saying, uh, verse 14, if you will, when John was coming out of prison. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel. Of the kingdom of God. And this is how he preached it. He didn't say God if you will. Or God maybe help. No he says the time. Are you seeing this king? He says the time is fulfilled. You're going to go back to your house. 
Put your hand on those plastic cups and say, the time! Call your kids. Put your grades on the table. The time! Speak kingdom over it. The time is fulfilled. Enough of the lingering anointing. We want the staying one. We want the one that is manifesting. Not the one lingering. The one manifesting. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. So the, the disciples had to preach like that. He sent them to tell the people the time has come. If there are any people in your family that are not born again, stop asking for their opinion. God didn't send us to convince them to get born again. He sent us to speak as kings and say, brother, so and so, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come. So number three is prophecy as the gospel of the kingdom. Prophecy as the gospel of the kingdom. The declaration of the time of things. My God. My God. It is gospel because it is good news. How many of you are tired of bad news? You're, you're, you're like, no, enough bad news in my life. I want some good news. Where are you? Because it's the kingdom that's going to bring good news. No one raised their hand. You guys are okay with bad news? All right, let me talk to myself. No more bad news in my life in the name of Jesus. Come on, it's my season for gospel. Good news. Hallelujah. So we will look at prophecy as the gospel of the kingdom. I have about eight minutes. So, are you getting where we're going? Are you getting where we're going? Because I believe that first of all, God wants us to honor him as God and recognize that his word is law in our lives and know that what the Lord has said is law. It must come to pass. And then we will have to recognize how he has administered it through Christ so we get a revelation of who Jesus is. And we see in Christ the fulfillment of the law of God. Am I still talking to somebody? We see in Christ the fulfillment of the law of God. Everything God had ever dreamt for mankind, we see it fulfilled in Christ. Everything Adam missed as the first man. We see Christ walking in it. And you are going to walk in that dimension. But you see the fruit of that word coming to pass in Christ. Is how he then establishes and propagates the kingdom of God. By the time we leave this conference. We have honored God. We have recognized Christ. And we have built his kingdom. Nobody heard me. I said we have honored God. Come on we have recognized Christ. And we have built his kingdom. Oh, if you believe that, clap your hands and give him praise. So, for today. I don't know if I can even dare this. Maybe I, I catch this. Yeah, I, 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 I'll catch this tomorrow. It's, 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 no, no, no. You're not tempting me to go there. I, I, Lord, lead me not into temptation. Glory to God. I believe what we have heard is charge enough. It is charge enough for us to pray. At least I've given you a tip of where we're going. It's charge enough for us to pray and know we are square center in the will of God. Come on, come on, come on. I'm, I'm looking for somebody. We, we are right where God would want us to be in this season. And we can't miss what God is about to do in our lives. And if anybody of you can participate in the prophetic word that has been released already. I'm telling you, you will be a testimony of the things that God has prepared to do in this ministry. I need you to look at your neighbor and say, did you catch anything? Did you hear anything? Are you ready for where we are going? Come on. Tap somebody. Say, did you hear anything? Are you ready to connect to something in this season? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Now I'm going to guide you in prayer. Is that okay? Is that okay? I'm going to guide you in prayer. Because if I just say start to pray, you may start to pray for um, uh, uh, something else. Glory to God. I want, I want to guide you in prayer. But I want to believe God that 
this that he has shared with us is exactly what he wants to do among us. So find somewhere to write because this is what we're going to be praying about. And I'm not reading it here. I am receiving it as the Lord will direct us. Kandi salibra gadosi kasabiliha. I need some escorts here. Come on. Kilusu beli and asiba. Come on, come on, come on. We are starting this thing up. We are starting this thing up. Don't, don't be religious on me. Come on, come on, come on. Kepala da zete libugu zindambrundu zimbale zudidai. Ikazididi. And apostle, let's do this together. If there's anything I've missed, please let me know so that we can pray this thing over. Hela gazude gidabade zadikala so dibele gede zadada de zadada. The first thing I would want you to pray about is your kingship. The realization that we are kings who are here to institute a new kingdom. Do you believe we have to pray over that? I need agreement here. Come on. How many of you caught where I start? There are many prophets but few kings. Are you there? There are many people saying so many things but few people speaking as kings. So we must pray and activate our kingship in Christ. Are you there somebody? He says, I have raised now. He says this, that you're now a kingdom of kings and priests unto God. So we need, we need an intercessory prayer that will activate the kingship anointing that is in our lives. We are going to pray for that. So write it down. Frank, write these things down for me and bring them here so I can pray as I remember. Number two, I want us to also pray very, very importantly for a stirring up. A stirring up, a stirring up. Because even though I'm a king, if my heart is not stirred up, if my heart is not stirred up to catch the wave, to understand what God is doing in my country, understand what he's doing in the body of Christ, then even though I'm a king, I will not know what to say. I need a stirring up. I need God to awaken me into the realities of what he is doing. And then I announce to the world that this is what the Lord is doing. Are you there, somebody? I love John the Baptist, even if he was a prophet, when he saw Jesus. He says, behold, the Lamb of God. That was a stirring. That was a stirring. Look at me, somebody. John the Baptist was baptizing people, dipping people, dipping people. He looks up, dip somebody. He looks up, dip somebody. He looks up, and then he saw one guy. He stopped this whole tradition he was doing. He stopped the routine he was doing. He says, wait a minute. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. You need your spirit to be awake enough to know when routine has been broken. When protocol has been reversed. You, you have to be awake. So we're going to pray for what? Talk to me. We're going to pray for what? It's stirring up to speak. I also believe we need to pray for the prophetic word that was already spoken. Is that right? Yes, because if I'm a king and I'm being stirred up, I must know what was spoken over a land, spoken over a family, spoken over my destiny. My grandfather was a reverend and he built the first church in our village. My father didn't walk in the ways of the Lord, but my grandfather had said that my children will be ministers of the gospel. Are you still there? So even if one generation missed it, guess what? This one, the generation I was born in could not miss it. And my children will not miss it. Are you, am I talking to somebody? You must know. Stop doing a calculation of generational curses of all the witches or whatever that were in your genealogy at the back. No. Can you look for a prophetic word? Can you look for something beautiful? Can, can you look for what was announced over you? There's a prophetic word on Kenya. Can you just catch it? Ah, somebody, are you here? I believe we need to pray that the Lord will awaken those words that was Hebas and This man had to search. Pastor Kathy, you're coaching me. No, he, it wasn't on the plate. It wasn't on the table. He had to go for the books until he found the scroll where it was written. Parents have the habit of writing down the prophetic words you announce over your children. I see, yeah, and I speak this by the Spirit, when we enter our houses, we usually have uh, photographs. Yeah? Maybe your marriage photograph or uh, um, um, 
He's the silent listener to every conversation. He's the, the Lord help us here now. Can you frame a prophetic word for your family from your own revelation and put it up on your, so that your kids grow reading it and knowing it so that they don't listen to funny prophets. They know my father is the prophet of our house. He has spoken and it shall be so. Glory to God, somebody. Number three, let us pray for what have you written? Three. That is for the prophetic words to come up. Apostle, are we together? Is there anything else? What have I said? I spoke for too long. Come on, help me now. It can't just be three. Come on, help me. Number four. Hello? Number four, what are we praying for? I believe that now that we are praying specifically about the building of the house, yes, we must pray for the building project. We must pray that the Lord will build this house and use us to build a house. Listen, as you're praying for that, please make sure you announce. Announce Athi River. Announce the hill on which we are. Announce governors and Jews and elders to build. Call all these builders to come. Hallelujah, somebody. Announce the vision supporters to show up. Announce those with the silver and the gold to show up. It's time to build. It's time to build. So let's announce. Let's pray. Ella, how many of you know we are not saying, God, help us and bring people to stand with us. Please, please, please. God, we don't want to be ashamed. We dug the holes now. There's no money. That's not what we are doing. We're saying, God, the God of the heavens. Has made us a ruler over the kingdoms of all the earth. We are praying with such spiritual arrogance. Am I talking to somebody here? The exiles. I had you. Number five. <laughs> Don't worry. That's in every church. I have some exiles in my church. And I keep praying for them. 70 years in exile. You're coming home. So number five. Let's pray for Tom. Let's pray for Mary. Let's pray for the exiles. If you know them by name, call them back to the house of the Lord. Because they were snatched by the devil. But we are praying them back in the name of Jesus. The exiles are coming back home. Are you glad that you came for today's conference? Hallelujah. Is there any six? I wish we have seven because that sounds like the number of God. Give me two more. Number six, what has the Lord ministered to you about? Cyrus, Darius, talk to me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Talk to me. Talk to me. Kalibe, pray in tongues. Those two are coming. Yes, from wherever. From the people of the place. We prayed for those in the building of the church. In the building. That's where the silver is. It's coming. So that was point four, I believe. Or somewhere. Pray in tongues, people. Pray, pray, pray in tongues. Anybody on the keyboard? Come help us. Come help us here. Come help us, please. Rateli pa 